All right, welcome back to a new Touch Center tutorial. And in this one, we're going to look at this thing called the gamma graphs. And we're going to look at two different examples of how to do that and set that up in Touch Designer. So the basic idea is that we have two textures that we're sort of displaying at the same time or on the same object. So the, the, the upper example here is more of a classical gamma graph. And we're also using face tracking to be able to look at it from different sides. So when I'm moving my head around, as you can see here, I'm literally changing the camera position. And then we can see these slices that make up an image from the one side. And when I move my head to the other side, we can see sort of an another image being shown. And like this, we can see both at the same time. And then there's a second example here where we're uh, just rotating the tiles themselves. So we really have like a front and a back side of these slices. So we can kind of see two different image, images that way uh, or videos or any texture really. It's really quite satisfying especially kind of the center part. It's super nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, as I said, we're, we're doing this with face tracking. So this is kind of a continuation of the face tracking perspectives tutorial. If you haven't watched that, check that out in the description. And without further ado, let's just get started and build this from scratch. So as always, we're just going to delete everything. And I'm going to add a base component here. And I'm going to call it a gamma graph one. I'm going to set the operator viewer to BG, and then we're going to look inside here. So we can already set an in chop here because we want to pipe in some chop data later on. And then we want to actually set up a render network in here. So as always, we're going to do that with SOPs for now until we have POPs. Uh, we're going to start with a rectangle here, and I want to have a, f a one by five size rectangle and I'm going to add a transform to this and uniform scale is down to 0.2. Then I'm going to add a geo and a camera and for the camera I also want to have a null which I'm going to call look at. I'm going to drag that onto the look at. We're going to add a light, copy and paste that and we're also going to be working with PBR so we want to have an environment light as well. And I'm going to add a movie file in because we need a an environment map. I'm going to add an null to this. Let's just call it env map. And I'm going to select a different one. Don't want to have the banana in this case, but the cloudy ocean is fine. I'm just going to drag that on here, Parm environment map. And we also definitely want to have a render top, as always. And then I'm just going to add a bloom to this, which we're going to look at quickly later. Then I'm going to add a transform, add a black background comp over background color on and let's just add a null call that bg resize all of these and we can display that in the background so now we just have one slice we want to have several ones of these so we're going to do that with instancing so on my geo i'm going to turn on instancing and then we're going to need to make those channels so i'm going to add a pattern chop set that to ramp and change the length to 10 manually for now if you do want to be in control of how many slices you want to have, you can easily set up uh, a, a slider, like a, a variable for that. So we can right click customize component, then simply add an int called num slices. And uh, we might want to set the default to like 10, range min 1, range max 20, something like that. You can show these parameters. So basically, it's just the custom page on this. And then uh, we can right click, copy parameter, and paste that reference in here. And now we can easily change the number of slices if we like. So the next step is to rename this. I'm going to call it TX. And I'm going to add a math to this as well as a null. Call that pause. And on my math, I'm going to change the range here to minus 0 0.9 and 0 0.9. And then on my geo, I'm going to use pause for translation and I'm going to use TX. So now uh, they're all nicely, like if you, if you just uh, change the range here, you can see they're actually like individual slices, exactly 10 of them. So now what we want to do is add the texture, the material, right? So I'm going to add a movie file in and I'm going to change it to this texture and I'm going to add a null to this and call that IMG1 image one. Then I'm going to add a PBR, use this as a base color map. I want to go down of the metallic to zero roughness to like 0 0.12. 
Then we can use the PBR on the Geo as power material. And now we can see that it's working nicely. So we might already want to change our lights so they're looking from the left. And then the other one looking from the right. I'm going to see why in a minute. So now we got the texture just like kind of copied and, and stretched over all of these individual slices. So it doesn't actually look like what we want to have in the end. So if we look here on the Geo1 instance two page, we actually have a texture mode. We can change that to transform. And I can't believe I only found out about that now. <laughs> we never stop learning, right? So we got the U that we want to use now, and we got scaling that we also want to use. So I'm going to add a rename here and change the name to U. And I'm going to add a math as well as a now. And I'm going to call this index. And then let's actually turn off all these viewers. They're always just eating up GPU. There we go. And I'm going to use that as a texture cord OP. And I'm going to use U for U. And that actually doesn't really change much yet. What we also have to do is add a constant here call the channel in their scale and change the value to 0.1. And then we can add a merge. And that merge is by default going to make sure that we have the same amount of samples, just going to be stretched. So for each sample here, so in this case 10, uh, the scale is always going to be the same amount, so 0.1. So now we can go here and change scale u to scale. And now we're almost there. So you can see it, it, it nicely picks out a different part of the image for each slice, but it, it's not perfect. So I found out and I'm not sure entirely why, but you have to just change this uh, range to like 0.9 here. And then actually it, it works perfectly. So if anybody can explain to me why that is, I'm, I would be happy to hear. For now, I'm just accepting that it works like that. So now we can go to the rectangle, maybe change it a bit higher. So like the, the aspect ratio is more correct maybe 0.55 should work well. Cool. So uh, now you might think, well, we went all these steps and we still just have the same image that we had here. Well, first off, it's in 3D space. <laughs> and secondly, we can now rotate these tiles individually. And now you can see that looks really nice also because of the reflection, because we've got a PBR and we also have lights coming from different spots. So you could technically give these lights also different colors. But actually, in this example, in this first example, we don't want to rotate the tiles individually, but we actually want to uh, look at the like two different textures uh, changing the camera like this. So to do that, let's set up the second texture. And I'm just going to copy and paste this and change the image. And then I'm going to copy and paste this one as well. We also want to have a second transform here. And we want to use the second PBR as a material here. So now if we rotate the first one by minus 60 and the second one by 60, you can see that's sort of working. So now if I change my camera, we can sort of see the two different images from the different sides. So maybe on the first one, we actually want to offset it by minus 0.1. And maybe we also want to move a bit closer with the camera to like maybe 3.5. And now uh, that's working pretty nicely. So now we can change our camera position. We can see the image from here. And then we can change the camera position and see the image from this side. So that's nice. Let's actually go back and set up the face tracking before we move on. So to do that, we want to have a video device in. And I'm going to set it to this camera. And uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to add a flip to this. Clip X. And then add a null, call that null input. Then I'm going to add a face track chop. Put that on here. I'm just going to select box U and rename it to TX. Then I'm going to add a filter, change the filter width to like 0 0.3. And then we want to have a math because if we look at, I'm just going to show you my face here a bit. So if I move to the very left, then this sort of becomes 0.1. But actually, I don't. I just want to move towards here. So around 2.5 and the same with like 2.8 on the other side. So I'm just going to change my input range here to like 0.2 and 0.8. So it's uh, normalized a bit better. And then I can put that in here because I've already added the uh, in chop. 
in here now I can remap it again, remap it again. So I'm going to use a map and a null. On my map, I'm going to change it to like minus 2.5 and 2.5. And now we can use that on the cam X. So now if I move my head over here, we're looking from this side and same from this side. And just a fun little thing that you can do here is actually go to view and change it to orthographic. And now you can see that it's a, it's a really interesting effect as well because it doesn't actually look 3D, but it still is 3D. And um, it's a really fun way to, to play with this. And you can kind of set it to perspective to ortho blend, and you can kind of play around with blending between one or the other. Um, I think kind of, yeah, somewhere more in the direction of the ortho is really interesting. So this is the first example. Let's just uh, copy and paste this whole component. Let's maybe use different images here. So actually in this case, what I wanna do is that I first, I don't need the second transform, just need this one. And I don't need to actually rotate it and I also don't need to offset it. So now the thing is we basically have two times 10 slices exactly at the same spot. Uh, we also don't wanna have, don't wanna change the camera position. So actually what we got here is basically just one image and you can you cannot see the second one. If I were to turn the render off for the first one, you can see the second one. The thing is they're, as I said, exactly at the same position, so you can't see them. So actually what we wanna do is we wanna rotate one of them by 180 degrees. And first that's not gonna make any difference. But the thing is that on the render we can go to advanced and we can turn off back faces. And now if we rotate the individual slices, we can see on the back, we have the, the other image. And on the front we have, so on the front we have the first input image and on the back we have the second input image because this is rotated and this is set to call face back faces. And it's basically just not rendering the back face or like the, the back of an object, of like a 3D object. So that's a really nice way to do that. But as you can see, so if I rotate this again to 180, it doesn't really work that nicely. First off, one thing we might want to do is flip it here, flip X. You might, we might think that that would work, but it doesn't. <laughs> so uh, another thing that we have to actually set up here is individual rotations. So I'm just going to copy this merge and math. I'm just going to add uh, another this channel here called Rote for rotation and set that to 180. And then on my math, I'm actually gonna, yeah, we're gonna look at that in a second. So I'm gonna add a null here and call that index one. So I might wanna call this index zero just to be clean. And then here we wanna use index one. And now we here, now here we also have the rotation channel that we can use. So we can now use that on rotate V and now everything is correct. Also because we flipped, right? If we don't flip it, then it's uh, the whole thing is sort of mirrored. So now we also have to flip it here. So it's kind of like a back and forth. So maybe it's also not the best way to do it, but if it works. So one thing that you might notice here is that we have this issue again, that sort of starts repeating. And also if you look closely here, we're actually cutting something off from the left. So in this case, because we rotated it, we have to go from 0.1 to one. I still can't really tell you why that is, but just, it just works. <laughs> so now one last thing that we want to set up here is uh, changing this from zero to 180 because we want to rotate each individual slice based on my head movement. So if I move to the left, you can see they're, they're rotating to that texture. And then if I move over here, they're rotating to the other texture. So that's working nicely. One last thing that I might want to do here is so if I move all the way to the left, and like very far, you can see it sort of, it, it doesn't stop rotating. It just keeps on rotating, even though it's already like turned all the way. So to prevent it from rotating further, we can just add a limit, clamp it and do zero and 180. So now if I move all the way over here, it's just going to stay at the very top and then the same, same thing here. So that's a really nice, simple use of the limit chop. So maybe here we want to go back to uh, looking at some aspect ratios. First off, what we have here is the same aspect ratio, even the same resolution. So let's say I have the butterfly, then obviously now that's going to be stretched. So what we might want to do here is set a fit 
and then change that to fit outside. And then we can just drag maybe this image here and then do dot width and dot height. And then uh, it's gonna be sort of fit into the same aspect ratio, which fits nicely with the setup that we have. But let's say that we actually want to have a square. So I'm just gonna use another butterfly. Actually looks really cool having two butterflies. And now they're actually gonna be both stretched. So the thing is that we actually have to change our setup. So what we have to do is actually change the scaling. So we might wanna have them not be as wide. And then we would also, one thing you can also do is right click here, copy parameter, paste the reference and just do minus. And then here we can maybe now change it to like 0.7 or 0.5. That's looking pretty good. So now we also have to adjust the scale there. And then that actually works pretty well. You always just have to see like the, the scaling here might be might be something that you would have to adjust. Uh, just, just kind of look whatever works with the aspect ratio that you have. So you, you usually just have to change the size on the rectangle and then also change the ranges here on, on the math. And sometimes you might also have to change the, the offset here, right? We have this kind of offset of how far, yeah, the, the first one is kind of being offset to the left. Another thing concerning that is that we might want to set both of them to 0 0.05 to the right. So it's actually centered, right? One last thing I want to show you here is that we have the bloom, or we can also just look at the other example. Yeah, you can kind of see like maybe that is too much. Maybe go down with the fill and the intensity, but it also makes it feel even more like it's kind of reflecting, right? So uh, when the light is hitting hitting it, it's like blooming more, <laughs> it's glowing more. So I think uh, adding a bloom to this is, uh, is a nice addition. And uh, obviously you can, you don't have to use the textures here. You can also add, for example, uh, a ramp, or maybe let's go back to the other one. And then here we might want to add a ramp, use the same resolution right away. It's always good practice. And we can set it to circular, maybe 0.1. And then maybe, or maybe, I don't know, 0.2. Maybe make that a bit more red and then a bit more blue. Set that in here. And now obviously that can be anything, right? So, so that's pretty cool. Another thing that's that's really nice is that we can actually work with videos, create videos where you can never see if anything is happening. Again, now that it's the wrong aspect ratio, so we might want to set it back to whatever we had before. But just wanted to tell you, you can use any texture, any video. You could even set the camera live feed on this on one side and then do something else on the other side. Really anything is possible here. And Feel free to expand this. Feel free to add anything. I'm always happy about credit on social media. And I'm, I'm even more happy about all the people supporting me on Patreon. So thank you so much for supporting me continuously. And yeah, if you want to check out my Patreon, there's a link in the description. And thank you so much for watching. And I will see you on the next video.